prairie habitat and its associated wildlife has always been an important component of the American landscape, including uh, the prairie dog colonies which support uh, an animal known as the Blackfoot or ferret, which is one of the rarest mammals in the world. In general, there was uh, a sense that black-footed ferrets were in trouble uh, even in the 1950s, 1940s, 1930s, but by 1979, in fact, there was some sense that the animal might actually be extinct at that point. And then a ranch dog brought in a ferret in Matisse, Wyoming, and found another small population was found, which persisted for a number of years in the early 80s until we had to take the last animals that had been exposed to disease into captivity. And in 1985, uh, there was an effort uh, that had just begun to start a small-scale captive breeding program for ferrets that would have been operated by the Wyoming Game and Fish. We are currently in front of the National Black-Footed Ferret Conservation Center, and our main job is kind of to be the center for captive breeding and other recovery actions um, throughout the program. Sometimes you have to wake them up a little bit. Now we have a few hundred ferrets scattered across the West in 25 different sites. We're aiming to have 3,000 ferrets across the West to, to take the species off the endangered species list. But those populations will require long-term maintenance to make sure that they don't disappear as well. There's already enough prairie dog habitat available in the West to meet our recovery goal of 3,000 adult ferrets in the wild. To get black-footed ferret recovery accomplished, to get ferrets on the ground and to maintain them on the ground, you've got to have a lot of partners. If you're working in 12 different states, that means 12 different state game and fish agencies. It means a number of tribes, county commissioners, neighboring landowners, other federal agencies. So partners are the key to black-footed ferret recovery. The tribal lands in the western states uh, represent huge amounts of acreage that could potentially raise ferrets in the wild. I think our program is a good example of how the Fish and Wildlife Service can partner with tribes to recover an endangered species. It's not coincidence that some of the best habitat and threatened or endangered species are found on ranches. It's an ideal fit. What we've seen in Colorado around the ferret program is really the way to change how conservation is done that works with landowners and for landowners. As a landowner that's been involved with black-footed ferret reintroduction for um, a few decades now, it hasn't really affected our management or uh, the economics of our, our operation. So it's really the great opportunity to come into the landscapes now and, and, and really conserve these large ranches either by acquisition like we did for this particular one or through conservation easements to maintain their status as active ranches. We have the opportunity to pay landowners to keep and maintain prairie dogs for the benefits release of black-footed ferrets on their property. And it has proven to be extremely successful. By going out and conserving ferrets, um, we can do an amazing job preserving the prairie for all the other countless species that rely on prairie dog colonies. With ferrets, there's a big, big landscape out there that's fairly empty as long as it's ranching country. And you can manage for prairie dogs in a lot of places in the West. So there are places for ferrets to go. And that's the exciting thing about the zoo partners is they see that they can breed every female ferret they have and as many young as they produce, we'll find a place to reintroduce them. They're beautiful. They are. Normally... Uh... The SSP, or the Species Survival Plan, our primary responsibility is to manage the genetics of this very small population. In case they should go extinct in the wild again, we'll have an assurance colony in captivity. The role of the uh, National Conservation Center, where we are, is to house the largest number of captive black-footed ferrets in the program. 
all our ferrets here at the center before they were released are vaccinated for three main things. Um, canine distemper, uh, plague, sylvatic plague in an animal, and rabies. Um, before we release an animal, they'll get all three of those vaccinations um, because they are very susceptible to all three of those diseases in the wild. Before we release any animals, um, the animal must pass uh, preconditioning where an animal displays its ability uh, to kill prey dog prey or not. Preconditioning has been a technique used for other, the recovery of other endangered species. The research involving preconditioning of black-footed ferrets was conducted by our partners at the U.S. Geological Survey. In the process, we released animals that had been raised in cages and various types of preconditioned animals side by side on the same prairie dog colonies. The survivals went from about 4% for cage reared animals uh, to well over 40% for preconditioned pen experienced kits. And in the best case scenarios, we even got the survival up to a better than 80%. Preconditioning lasts for a minimum of 30 days and their animals are fed live prey dog prey uh, once a week. And if the animals prove successful at killing prey dogs, then they are uh, eligible for uh, release candidates and sent to one of our reintroduction sites. The release experience for the staff is very exciting. It's kind of tough to see them go out the door, but our staff are extremely dedicated and they're really excited to think that they're part of a process where they're bringing back an endangered species. Hopefully the release from a ferret's perspective is not terribly stressful because through preconditioning, they've been, been exposed to a burrow environment and wild prey dog prey. And ideally, uh, they would kill a prey dog the first night. Even though I retired a couple years ago, I continue to work on Blackfoot Ferret Recovery, primarily because I see this as a real achievable goal. We can reach the recovery goal that we've put forth in our plan, but it's going to require active management for the long term. And with the zoo's help, we can recover this species in my lifetime. So it's very exciting. And I'm looking forward to the day where we can recover the black-footed ferret and zoos can stop breeding the black-footed ferret in captivity because they will be recovered in the wild. It's part of why we, people live in the West. You know, you ask people, why is there an interest in wildlife? It adds to the quality of their life. And this particular program will not only benefit black-footed ferrets, but all these other sensitive species. But as I said, it will also serve as a model for other species recovery efforts in the future.